here like this. It's really close to normal. No, 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 we haven't gone live yet, have we? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Oh, cool. Are we going to have our meetings in the new building? And will it be caved?
good. At least we can see what's going on now, too. Welcome, everyone, to the HCAM studios and the uh, Board of Selectmen meeting. We are actually opened up earlier in executive session to uh, uh, discuss contract negotiations, litigation, and real property. Um, we'd like to uh, begin, as usual, with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> At this time, it's customary to go to the uh, public session, public forum where residents are invited to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding the town government. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to come forward? Lovely, come on up. Name and address for the- Dave Goldman, 24th Street. Sent you guys a letter, which I believe is in your packet, about the Dog Park Working Committee, Working Group. Um, requesting uh, that the selectmen in their infinite wisdom provide a seat for the land trust because um, the trust has been asked to take conservation restriction on not only the used property but several other pieces of property, actually 12 pieces of property that are contiguous to the used use property. And um, I wanted to bring that forward to you guys and see if you were amenable to providing a seat and a vote for us on that, that working group. Well, we can, uh, we can take it into consideration. Okay. Great, thank you. Anybody else want to come up? Okay. Consent agenda. Um, we'll consider the, the uh, well, we'll just run through the <coughs> board minutes for 5 9 17. The board of selectmen will consider appointments to the following committees David Ropar and Robert McGuire, uh, for an at large member for a three year term in the Marathon Committee for a term to expire June 30th, 2020. Uh, Jim Cirillo is a member of the Upper Charles Trails Committee. He's the Conservation Committee Commission representative, term expiring June 30th, 2018. Board resignations. Board of Selectmen will consider accepting resignations of Eddie Lee Schaub from the Personnel Committee and Chuck Joseph from the HCAM Board of Directors. The Ambulance Fund Gift. The Board of Selectmen will consider accepting several Ambulance Fund Gifts in the memory of Firefighter Tom McIntyre. Parade Permit. Uh, board of Selectmen will consider approving a parade permit for the Liana Cassidy on behalf of the center enter stage left for the ESL Wicked 5K Walk Run fundraiser for the ESL Arts to be held October 29, 2017 at 9 a.m. And uh, that's all of them. So, Mr. Uh, Chair, can we break out item number two, please? Number two is out. Um, I like uh, four, please. Okay. Broken out. Two and four. Okay, so the chair will entertain a motion to take action on one, three, and five. Mr. Chair, I approve. I move that we approve the consent agenda for items one, three, and five. Second. 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 Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same. Unanimous. Okay, so number two, Mr. Hur. Um, in number two under board committee appointments, it says David Ropar, and I'm, I'm looking at, or sure. Robert McGuire, uh, McGuire as an at-large member for a three-year term for the Marathon Committee for a term to expire June 30, 2020. Is it an either or, or is it an and? It's an all, and we have a recommendation from the Marathon Committee Chair as well as uh, uh, the board will have an opportunity to interview the, uh, I believe one of the candidates is here. I don't know if uh, Mr. David Roper is here. So one of the candidates is here, Mr. Bob McGuire. So Bob is here, but David is not here. Yeah. Okay. Could I just interject with a point of, I guess, process or Absolutely. order? Um, I wouldn't think that this item belongs 
in, uh, in the uh, consent agenda in the future because it's something that we actually need to talk about and we actually make, need to make a decision on. Uh, consent agenda is generally considered to be things that we can look at and it's somewhat more administrative and there's no discussion necessary and we can just move on. Uh, so if in the future we could have this broken out automatically and not be part of the consent agenda, that would be better. I should explain that. Yeah. I'll take the heat for that. Agreed. Thanks. Yeah. And, and we don't have both individuals here, just Robert McGuire. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve Robert McGuire as an outlarge member of the Marathon Committee for a term to expire June 30, 2020. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Opposed? Staying unanimous. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks for stepping up. <laughs> okay. Um, so then that we, if we took out two, so the, um, then uh, Jim Cirillo, as a member of the Upper Charles Trails Committee, Conservation Commission representative, term expiring June 30th. Mr. Chair, isn't this a, an appointment by the Conservation Commission? Why do we have to vote what they appointed? has to vote the board has to vote did any other candidates um, well it's a conservation commission appointment so I guess it's not our process seems a little odd to me okay I move that we appoint Jim Cirillo as a member of the Upper Charles Trail Committee uh, as the Conservation Commission representative for a term expiring June 30 2018 second for the discussion how do you vote aye, aye. opposed to uh, unanimous okay uh, ambulance from Gibbs. Okay. Yeah, so. just to, um, as I kind of always do on this ambulance fund, uh, particular person, it's, it's uh, great to see, uh, looking at the list, it's great to see these people from, from town and as uh, Mrs. Wright pointed out, from, from out of town, uh, continue to donate in the, uh, in the name of uh, Tom McIntyre. Uh, it just shows what a legacy he leaves, and um, I, think, I don't think there's any secret on my feelings towards he or, or the work he's done for the town, and I'm not going to belabor it, but I just wanted to make note that there are some pretty significant gifts on here that, uh, that should be uh, kind of duly noted. Excellent. Okay, so would you uh, like to make a motion to accept them? I would like to make a motion to accept the donations to the ambulance fund uh, in memory of Thomas McIntyre. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries unanimously. Okay. After you pray, permits done. Center School Reuse Advisory Team. The Board of Selectmen will consider appointing members to the Center School Reuse Advisory Team. Applications have been received from the following residents, Laura Berry, Richard Flannery, Darlene Hayes, John Pavlov, and Ken Weissmantel. Five people for five positions. Okay, so. Um, Mr. Chair, is there a need to move on this committee at this time? Do we have a timeline that we're up against or what's the rush? Um, I I'm not saying we're rushing, but. No. Mr. Kamalo, what do we have in our uh, charge? There are two reasons why I believe the board should act as soon as possible uh, in appointing the committee members. Number one, there is an expectation and there's a commitment that the town made to the MSBA that we will answer this question. Um, uh, we had made a commitment to at least have the group in place uh, by May of this year. Uh, that's number one. Number two, okay. uh, they, they have been public inquiries uh, asking about the future use of the center school, and I believe it's important that we engage the public on this topic. So we said May, we'd have something by May, or we thought to we the would? MSBA, yes. Okay. Um, and this is Mr. through the chair. This is an advisory committee so this this committee is going to study and organize and then report and then the board of selectmen in guidance with maybe the school committee will make that final determination is that correct 
Well, I don't believe not with the school committee. I believe it's, it's the board of select. It's the board of selectmen. Okay. Yeah. Unless we decide to give it back to the school to use as a backup school or something. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, how long? How long was uh, was it posted for, Mr. Kamal? I have to check my records. It was over just for a while, though, right? It, it, it's in oh, ten days. What we always yeah. It, it, so. it was for a long. For, no, for that's, a long I just yeah. want to make sure we yeah. had it open for what we typically do at a minimum. Yeah, that's fine. Thanks. So the chair will entertain a motion to um, approve the five for five. Could I ask one more question before we Absolutely. go that far? Um, do do we think that the disruptions with town hall and people sitting in various places around town has that impacted our ability to receive applications or to to do this type of work and get the word out and get people engaged in certain projects or you feel comfortable that we've it's been out there and people are knowing about it if they want to get involved they're they're putting their name forward now um, for the most part the bulk of the responses to committee membership requests or vacancies come through our online process, and our online process was not disrupted uh, during the town hall uh, move. However, there, there may be other people who normally would, uh, who would prefer to, to submit their applications in writing. We continue to receive any mail that is directed to town hall. Um, I don't believe uh, we may have missed any applications because of the town hall move. Well, uh, somewhat off to on topic, but off topic, I received two phone calls in the last four or five days of where people from town can send money for the, now that the town, hall's, town hall is closed, where do we send the money for the ambulance fund uh, in memory of Tom McIntyre? I have one check in my car, and uh, there, there's another one that's... Uh, that's, that's highly frowned upon, by the way. I have cash in my glove yeah. compartment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It was a check made out to the ambulance fund, yeah. and uh, they didn't know where to send it. So they had, after they had sent it to me, they said, "Where should I send this?" So, um, so I have that in my truck, and uh, there's another one that's coming. I'm sure that. Okay, uh, well, we have, let's stay. Let's stay on this this subject right here. Right I think now. that is on subject. I think that it does show that not everybody does know oh, where everything point. is. Well, what, my my question, to Mr. Kamalo, is. Um, in our charge, we had a resident with a background in real estate and property management, a resident who's a registered architect, a resident with a background in land development, and a resident with a background in public relations and public participation process, and a resident at large. And then the four non-voting liaisons. I was just wondering, do uh, do we have that in these uh, in this five before we go ahead and vote the five? through the chair, Elaine, feel free to jump in here. We believe from our review of the applicants that came through, there is sufficient okay, institutional knowledge um, to address the, the various categories that are covered. I guess I would we may not have, in, yeah. in my opinion, we, when, we, when we put those things, when they, we put those just kind of job descriptions or background descriptions together, um, that's, that's our ideal uh, pool of candidates. But when we have five people for five positions and we don't have any others that are coming in and it's uncontested, um, not not to say anything negative about any of the applicants, but beggars can't be choosers. Uh, the important thing is that we have five people who are interested in this and are willing to put their time and energy into it's the great. effort. Would it be reasonable to get the interests of each of those individuals as to why they want to serve in this committee while we're here? Absolutely. Perfectly reasonable to me. Could we see if any of them are here? And Ask that simple question. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we believe all four out of the five may be present. We did receive an email from Laura Berry indicating that uh, she had a conflict. I think her daughter has uh, an event tonight. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, is Chief Flannery here? Chief Emeritus. Oh, there he is. Chief Emeritus. Yes. The one man who has actually gone to center school. <laughs> <laughs> Coming straight off, fact, uh, straight off the charter review committee, he yes. can't stop himself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, matter of fact, I went when it was one of only two schools, so that, uh, that's how far back I go. That in um, Carrigan. So. The old old high school. Yes. That in Carrigan. Uh, no, the uh, the the newer high school. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> but um, but uh, Mr. Chair, thank you for bringing me up. Uh, if you'd like, I'll just give a little um, intro as to why I'm interested. When I when I saw the um, committee being formed, um, I I have <clears throat> I'm one of a third generation that went to center school. Um, I, as you know, I've been a member of town government in one form or another for going on 35 years now or more. And I just got off the charter committee and was, you know, was very impressed with the process and how long that took and how intricate it was and how serious the process was. And I believe that this building's reuse is going to be uh, very important to the town and how it goes forward. And I wanted to be part of that process to be able to sit down, examine what possible uses there are for the building, and be able to give the Board of Selectmen um, my opinion through the committee as to what I think would be the best option for the town going forward for that building that has so much history to the town. Thanks very much. If it's okay. Uh, Hi, Chief. Do you have any issues, and I'm not saying this is how it has to go, but I just want to make sure that we keep an open mind. Do you have any issues if we had to sell this building and it was privately developed? I, I think that's one of the things we should explore, is exploring how that, the, how that process would work. And if that is the best option to the town, I would not have a problem recommending it. Um, I would want to, I want to see what other options are that are out there. I want to talk to professionals that, um, that, that deal with having uh, reused school buildings, uh, reuse school buildings and projects, whether it becomes town projects, and you expand it to, you know, more town offices available, uh, more rec opportunity for recreation with the gym that's attached to it, uh, classrooms to be able to do, you know, trainings and things in it for you know, town residents, or multi-use. So I think I think there's very there's there's a, a great deal of options that are probably out there and available. I've started to look at some best practices for uh, for reusing school buildings that are online. So I'm starting to get some ideas as to what the process should be. And I think we should, you know, first as a committee, one of the things we should do is look at those best practices and come up with some guidelines based upon what's out there already available and, you know, and what's already been uh, invented and not reinvent the wheel and, and try to come up with the best possible options for the town going forward for a set of school. Um, well, I've had the, the um, ability, I mean, the, the, uh, the luxury of knowing Chief for 40 years or so now, and I know that when he commits himself to something, he commits to something with both feet in the water, and uh, he's a very smart, very intelligent guy, he's very committed, and he's a historian of Hopkinton. <clears throat> so uh, I know by my recommendation of Chief Flannery that he will have the best um, interest of Hopkinton moving forward because I know he's not going anywhere. He wants to be here, he wants his kids to be here. So, I, for me, it's an absolutely no, a no-brainer. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, very appreciative that you stepped up to do this, and uh, thank you, and you have my vote. You're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, and I just want to reiterate, thank you very much for stepping up, the, and, and the, the Charter Review Committee, I, I, Todd, Michelle, and the, and the, and the rest, that, that, I mean, what great work. That was very serious, and you guys had to make some very tough decisions of what to bring forward, what not to bring forward to town meeting to make sure that the stuff got through. Yeah, there was some, you know, and that's, you know, those are the those are the big seats, and those were tough to fill. And I really appreciate everybody who did all that. And if the, the same effort can get into this, I, I just know that you're going to do a great job. But really, thank you very much for stepping up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. What's next on the hot seat? Ms. Hayes, come on in. Hi there. Welcome. Hi. Um, I guess I come with a, a desire to want to see the school um, be reused creatively, some that could de generate revenue, some that could actually generate using, um, just like uh, Mr. Flannery was saying, the gym, the cafeteria are very unique assets to that building things that we have lost some of the stuff in the school that we may be able to expand on, things like having parks and recs in there and developing programs like life skills that we don't no longer have home ec classes. Maybe those that can be extracurricular. I see that, but I see the upstate, the upper level, and it's in a historic area, could be used 
to incorporate a lot of events that could also help generate revenue, just like Keith Tech does, Asset Bed Valley, Blackstone Valley. Um, I was studying best practices of what to do, what people can do with schools after hours and realizing once that is empty, we can do that during hours and it can generate revenue for the town and bring creatively a lot of extracurricular kind of fun things into the town and enhance residents. I also looked at it as that if Parks and Recs um, would be able to use a facility like that, that um, we could, um, if a hurricane hit and Poly Arts had, a, instead of shut down, could actually be moved to the downstairs of that facility or even Sunday concerts can be moved there. There's a lot of things where you can roll out mats and put down plywood, save a gym floor, set up tables, and, and continue events that would normally be canceled because of weather on the common. And it's in an area where it probably is the most historic and most photographed area in town. So preserving some of the history and keeping it as something that is very centered around the community. So uh, again, I don't have any preconceived notions about what we should do. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm all for preserving the historic nature of, and the facade of the building. Um, but uh, you know, the economics may not allow the town to hold that asset. So I would just want to make sure you're not opposed to considering uh, the private sale of the building to a private developer to do other things, but obviously maintaining that decor yeah. and so forth. Um, no, absolutely not. I mean, and I think it, it's not the first thing on my list that I'd like to see done, but absolutely if that's what needs to be done, would be done. I mean, we've already sold one school before. It's been preserved beautifully. It abuts, you know, ballparks. It's, it abuts the back of, next to this building, and it has blended right in, and it's kept its culture of a very historic building. It still even says well, the school name on the outside. So no, not at all. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Good. Thanks so much for coming. John Pavlov, is John here? Hello. <clears throat> Welcome, John. Thanks for coming. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. So, um, I'm in a unique position. I live at 15 Ash Street, the Yellow Victorian, right to the right of Center School. So, I've lived there for 21 years, and for 21 years, I've seen what's good and what's bad. You know, traffic patterns, lack of parking, uh, difficult to, to snow plow, um, et cetera. The, the parking on the streets, for instance, you know. In, so, you know, I think when we consider the reuse of the building, we have to cons take the big picture into uh, account, such as um, what do we do for expanded parking? Also, when you look at um, the historical part, um, which is beautiful, the addition isn't quite as nice. <laughs> And it's been difficult, um, you know, to heat the addition um, or cool the addition. It's been very difficult to maintain um, the addition. So I think some of the things we should consider when we're considering the reuse is what parts of the building stay. Um, and I don't think we necessarily have to reuse the entire building. Um, to answer the question, am, am I open to selling it? Um, for office space or for some other use, the answer would be yes. But whatever contractor would come in and need to, um, would need to refurbish, um, particularly the uh, newer part of the building almost completely in order to make it um, you know, usable. John, you have a beautiful property. You've done such a nice job with your house and that whole area there, it really looks great. And we don't want to do anything to take away from that. Um, so we have an abutter. Uh, this is an advisory, so I don't think we have an issue with that in terms of um, conflicts because it's advisory only, do we? Uh, correct. The committee is advisory. The selectmen will be making the final decisions, uh, and in that regard, uh, we believe we have addressed any conflicts that may arise from the fact that, he's a, that one of the applicants may be, or one of the members of the committee may be an abata. I'm good. John, thanks so much for coming. That was easy. Yeah. Thank, you. Just thank you. Great job. Thank you very much. And uh, Mr. Weissmantel, 145 Ash Street. He's not here. Okay. No, Ken. Okay. Mr. Chair, uh, I know, and I think many folks know Laura Berry and Ken Weissmantle well in town. So I'll, I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the five applicants for the uh, Center School Reuse Advisory Committee, uh, an advisory committee that will report to the Board of Selectmen at a future date. 
second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. Okay, unanimous, thank you. Okay, wow. 300th anniversary committee disband. Oh my goodness, it sounds like, I remember three years ago just voting to start it up. Come on up, everyone. I know, I need a crowd. <laughs> Um, so you probably are wondering why we're even here and didn't this already end and the answer is that it has ended although it took us a while to um, tidy up all the bills and we had some money left over so we were able to do some to, to provide some additional historic gifts to the town most notably um, we were able to pay for refurbishing and installing the Colella sign in the Hopkinton Historical Society building so if you've not been there, I really recommend that you check it out. Everybody in the room when it's on is the color green. It's a little <laughs> overwhelming, but it's very cool um, to have it there. And, and as you remember, Colella is closed during our anniversary year, so it's particularly um, appropriate, I think. So what we wanted to do was just to provide you with a final summary of what our income was, what our expenses were. These are not, you know, you're not, auditors and this is not an official accounting but this is just a general appropriation of buckets into so that there will be a record going forward for future committees and for other towns who call with interest in what we did um, just of the variety of events that were put on the, the approximate cost of the events um, the amount of money that we raised and the amount of um, and the gifts that we left behind uh, to commemorate the celebration. So that's really it. Um, if you have any questions about that, I'm sure we can answer them. But most importantly, we were hoping that you would be willing to entertain a motion to dissolve our committee because we're ready to retire. We're done. <laughs> we're done. We're done. <laughs> we won't be hanging on till the 350th. Would the committee be uh, opposed to being uh, recommissioned to the 325th anniversary? Check in with us in about 22 okay. years. That's right. Right. I don't want the door shut. <laughs> you guys did a great job on that 300. It was a it was a wonderful job. Thank you. Did the town right, Mr. Hara? Any comments? I'm fine with disbanding. It was a fantastic year, and I thought the celebrations were awesome. And I think it started some other things in town that are going to go on now, which is really what's what's great. There's a legacy coming out of it. Uh, the carnival even kind of looks like it a little bit uh, coming up this weekend. And we've got fireworks budgeted for a couple of years, I think. And so I'm, I'm really excited with everything that happened, but also what you've set up to carry us forward to the future. So thank you so much. Well done. Sorry. Yeah, has anybody told you guys what a great job you did? <laughs> <laughs> um, I just remember being there, first of all, in awe of the big night, yeah. uh, walking around the corner of the school, walking to the back, and seeing all the people saying, this is unbelievable. You know, I mean. I never would have imagined that that many people were actually going to show up, and um, you know, it really shows how much spirit the people in town do have. When you know, when they have a reason to come out, they will come out. And um, you know, I know that, that that one night was more or less the focus of the celebration, but throughout the year, the different events that you had, they were just spectacular. Um, so thank you. Um, you know, I, I will happily vote to disband you <laughs> take this monkey off your back uh, but uh, thank you very much I think one thing I also wanted just to reiterate again Jean was our fearless leader and really uh, did an incredible job just keeping us uh, focused and uh, delivering what we said we would do at the beginning uh, of, the, of the whole uh, events but one thing I did want to reiterate was the amount of money we were able to contribute to the Claflin Fountain yes. refurbishing because basically uh, there that any project like that ended up costing a great deal more than was anticipated and fortunately because of the donations we got uh, we were able to contribute close to seventy nine thousand dollars to finish that project mm -hmm. which is so appropriate for mm -hmm. 300 year of town so yeah, and also, um, just when I came in here and I saw certain people here, there's a guy on the committee that has hammered me pretty hard on an issue in his neighborhood that 
Uh, I have now written down and will bring to the town manager, and I guarantee that that will be addressed uh, by 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock tonight, Mr. Stanley. Okay, okay. I promise. When I saw you, my heart dropped. I'm like, oh, he came to beat me up. <laughs> so I promise that'll be taken care of. Stat. Yeah, I, I also just want to say thank you to the to the whole committee. You know, you, you started a whole movement, and, and um, that's why we're now going to have a Hopkinton Day and. And um, it was just great to, to see and feel the pride. And when, when you're, we were out that night, you know, the Hopkinton, a lot of people I've brought it up before, I'd say, oh, it doesn't have the same feel. But we do. Mm -hmm. It's a great place. People are moving here because we, we are a great town. And, and, and it was so evident that entire year. And I, 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 I again, want to apologize. I did miss that <laughs> bean supper. I got spoken to a few <laughs> times about the bean supper. I tried to hit most every event, um, but really thank you, and um, it's, it's sad to think that, that you're disbanding, but, uh, but thanks for all the work that you did. You. Okay, so the chair will entertain a motion to disband the 300th anniversary committee. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, unanimous. Thank you, guys. Thank you're free to go. Thank you. We're retired. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay, so um, the chair will entertain a motion to open the public hearing for grants of location on Mr. South chair, Street. Yes, 726. We still have four minutes. Oh, okay. Thought we were doing well. With your, yeah. right. yes, yeah, with okay. your permission, we can pick up number eight. Okay. Okay, um, Ms. Lazarus, could you report to us on the. Uh, ability of the towns uh, to increase the minimum age to purchase tobacco products. Thank you. On May 9th, on May 9th, Logan Sullivan appeared before you and uh, made um, an eloquent um, request for the board to consider uh, looking into raising the minimum age to purchase tobacco products and the board asked me to um, investigate that. So after looking into it, uh, I've determined that it's the Board of Health that has the authority to vote to increase the minimum age to purchase tobacco products to 21. There is um, legislation pending uh, in the state legislature to raise it statewide uh, at the present time and uh, had a hearing in May on that. Uh, in past years, the Board of Health has discussed the matter and has decided to wait for a statewide increase, um, and that hasn't changed as far as I know. Um, and our surrounding communities, um, some are 21 and some are 18. So that's, in a nutshell, that's it. And you have my memo, and so I'm just yep. stating what's in there. Okay. Is there any questions on that? No comments to her. Sounds to me like Logan needs to go to the Board of Health and work his magic there. Um, and uh, I have contact information for him, and I'll Great. suggest that he do that. Thank you. That's I'm good. Thank you. I'm good. Thank you very much. Okay. Do, do, do you think we can squeeze in water and sewer rate? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're ready. Uh, Tell management report. Uh, How close are we? How about number 12? We may begin. Board liaison reports? Yeah. Liaison assignments? Or reports. <clears throat> Does anybody have just any reports and then we do the assignments? Any liaison reports? I do not. Mr. Hurd. No, thanks. Well, we had uh, we had an Irvine Tadaro meeting that uh, we just opened up. Uh, we uh, uh, we're going to start to uh, look into um, uh, bus parking in the for the new elementary school, uh, but uh, that's uh, that's all I've got. Okay. So, we got 7.30. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, that's my, uh, that's my other page. So, the chair will entertain a motion to open the public hearing for grants of location on South Street, West Main Street, West Elm Street, for Eversource Energy. 
Um, board of Select will consider acting on two petitions submitted by Eversource as follows. A petition requesting permission to locate two poles on West Elm Street, southwesterly side approximately 170 feet northwest of South Street, and two, a petition for a purpose of obtaining grants of locations to install approximately 12,140 feet of conduit and 27 manholes within South Street, West Elm Street, and West Main Street. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, so we'll open up the, uh, the hearing. Mr. Kamala, could you walk us through? Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, in, in, in terms of process, as the board has done in, in, in past hearings, uh, we will first hear from Eversource. Uh, we have also included in your packet uh, and in fact shared additional comments tonight uh, from a meeting that staff held with Eversource yesterday. Uh, and I think the, the big take from that meeting, and this is one of the recommendations from staff, is the fact that uh, as part of this application, Eversource is indicating a request to do overnight work for a period of approximately eight months. And it is because uh, when we published the public hearing, we did not identify this as part of the project to the public. And thus, staff will be recommending to the board for its consideration respectfully that a public, be here, a public hearing be scheduled uh, that will specifically indicate uh, the overnight work uh, in the future. Wow, that is a change. Um, please. Christine Cosby, Eversource Energy. And yes, we are uh, petitioning the town for grant the locations for conduit manholes within South Street, West Elm Street, West Main Street, and also for two poles within West Elm Street. And the purpose of this work would be in order for uh, to increase the electrical capacity produced by Eversource's substation expansion, and this would enhance the reliability and capacity of service throughout the town of Hoppington. Okay. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have one. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Kamalo, have we been able to set up any meetings with Eversource so that we can identify all the split poles in town and get them to give us a plan and definitive dates on when they will be replaced? Yes, we, we have had preliminary conversations with uh, Eversource. Uh, those meetings also require the participation of Verizon. Uh, it has been difficult for us to get those meetings in, in place. Um, I think as the town has stated, and we have shared this with Eversource, there is a desire to reduce the number of double poles uh, in town. Uh, and in fact, as recent as, um, uh, as last week Friday, I received uh, a telephone text message with a picture of a pole with uh, uh, guy support wires on Main Street that the member of the public basically identified as blighting Main Street. Um, so, in answer to your question, preliminary conversations have taken place, but the more substantive conversations have not taken place. Uh, Mr. Chair, my suggestion would be that we table this issue until Eversource actually comes to the table and makes a commitment uh, in a conversation with Mr. Kamalo and other, whoever else needs to be there from town staff and uh, commits to rectifying the situation across town. Thank you, Mr. Starry. So, uh, Todd stole my thunder on this one. Um, my thought is I'm not willing, as, a, as one fifth of the member of this board, I'm not willing to entertain any type of waivers, uh, consideration, anything until they actually do some work around here. Uh, I'm tired of the preliminary conversations. I'm tired of them saying that Verizon's, it's Verizon's fault. I'm tired of Verizon saying it's your fault. I'm sick of it. The, town, the town's a great town, and I got people coming to my house saying that they ripped their coat because they walked by one of your rip pole, your broken poles, or um, I'm just tired of the preliminary conversations. I just I want some action done. So I am fundamentally opposed to any type of waiver or consideration for you guys moving forward until all these poles are fixed. Mr. Hur, you're making dead. 
Hi, <laughs> welcome to Hopkinton. Um, so we've had a tough few meetings with respect to uh, some work that Eversource is considering in town. I'm sure none of it has to do with the electrical burial of conduits and things like that. Um, but you know, we as a community see Eversource and Eversource is one entity, and there's lots of divisions in Eversource, and there's lots of responsibilities inside Eversource, but we see it all as one. And to my colleagues' points, we're very frustrated as a community with Eversource now, um, specific to polls, a lot of which Verizon has control over or owns, but you guys are on those polls, so you can put some pressure on them. Uh, specific to um, what's going on on Elm Street with a proposed gas gate station on the gas side of Eversource. And with respect to what they want to do up on Wilson Street, uh, which is to revamp uh, some of the controls and so forth uh, at the tank farm. So there's a lot going on in town right now Hopkin in Hopkinton with Eversource. And unfortunately, you're coming this evening and you're getting the brunt of it pushed back at you. Joanne's kind of heard some of this too, and she understands uh, the frustrations. I agree with my colleagues. I'm not inclined to do anything to help Eversource do anything until Eversource steps up to the plate and starts talking to us about what they're going to do to be a good neighbor going forward, like we've all been together for the last 50 years. So uh, I, I, I love electrical conduit. It's what I do for a living. I love copper in the ground. That's what I do for a living, all those things. But this is not something I can support right now until Eversource uh, figures out in that big entity how they're going to interact with Hopkinton going forward in a more positive manner. Okay. Well, <laughs> there are team, uh, Eversource team here that w was here to answer any questions that you may have or concerns that you may have. Um, I, I'd like to introduce them if, if you would like to see if mm -hmm. they can respond to any of the if questions like. that you have. Okay. <laughs> um, it's Joanna Leary's public. But <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely mention, um, you know, I can certainly, um, you know, help and make sure that the meeting does take place uh, with Verizon and Eversource <laughs> folks for operations. Um, I know that some of the questions had come up and, you know, we do the wires on top of the poles. That's our responsibility to make sure that uh, we, if there's, a, if there's a second pole placed, that we take the wires on, on the old pole and put them onto the new pole. I will double check to see how we're doing on those, but when it comes to the physical pole, um, then it's the responsibility of everyone on the pole to obviously remove their wires so Verizon can come back and do their work. Um, I hadn't realized that there was trouble getting that meeting through Eversource, so I'm happy to work with you, Mr. Kamalo, to get that scheduled and to address any polls, and then to report back on the polls that we actually are on in town, because I think we probably have a better story, but, you know, the numbers will, you know, share that um, at a later date. Um, you know, the importance of this work, obviously, is to get it started, because we know it's the reliability uh, for, um, to bring, to bring reliability um, and to keep that reliability going here in Hopkinton. So really that's why we were, be we were before you tonight um, hoping to get started because when we get the approval from the Board of Selectmen, we still have to um, go out for bid when we have to have a pre-construction meeting. We have to work with the public safety on the uh, traffic plan and all of that does take time. And so knowing that that had time, I, I think that I'm a little disappointed because I, I guess I ha was hoping that maybe that the news about the polls would have come up at the you know meeting yesterday, so I could have at least asked operations to see what was going on behind the scenes, to see what delay you know was happening and how I could help them because I certainly have a great contact. I know you have a great contact at Verizon, so I think you know working together we can always uh, address those you know polls that are of concern. So. Um, well, we've, we've, been, we've been disappointed too, and hopefully this time crunch will uh, be the impetus that's required to make this happen. Okay, understood. And, and Joanne, the other thing is that you know, we have, do have precedent for some of these bigger jobs at, uh, at Legacy Farms when, when, when we were shaving down the road, mm -hmm. um, the mews when they were doing the, the reconstruction there. So there is some precedent of, of, of you know, how to handle some of these long-term projects. Eight months is... is is a heck of a lot longer, and then you know at night and 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 uh, you know parts of these are going into neighborhoods. So we there's a lot that we still have to discuss, even about this this project right here. Okay, and um, if if I could on the night work, um, what we had asked um, you know the town for was to do evening work, and they said yes. At yesterday's meeting, it was. Um, 
discuss that when we get to the neighborhoods, and they mentioned a few of the neighborhood areas, that we would switch to a daytime construction. We said that, that we could add that to our mix, and we would just, you know, kind of divvy up our crew so that the work continues, sometimes in the day, mostly at night, but ob obviously be respectful. And then um, Ms. Lazarus had mentioned, too, an outreach to the abutters that we would do, and depending upon how far back we go, you know, in the neighborhoods, it's really just from the direction of the town, and we would support that. And I know how important it is because mm -hmm. I, I, I'm the facilities director at Golden Pond and, mm -hmm. and uh, several times a year, poll 19, mm -hmm. something happens. So I know the poll, I know exactly where it is and how it works because it's always poll 19. And so I do know that it has to be fixed, but we, but we, need, uh, we need to have Eversources as really stepping up and being, being a good neighbor because mm -hmm. you know it's 50 years and some of the stuff lately has uh, has been a little disconcerting. Okay, so yeah, as soon as uh, as soon as we get every all that taken care of, polls, Verizon, you guys can even maybe go a little further than what you have to do. As soon as those get taken care of, then I'll start thinking about giving you guys some waivers for stuff. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, Mr. Kamalo. So, um, okay. how should we proceed? Close out the public hearing. Well, well we no, gotta no, go no, to just a letter. Any abutters want to come up and discuss the wire undergrounding? Okay. Anybody else from the public want to come up? Come on up. Should I just step back? <laughs> Thanks, Joanne. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hi, Richard. Richard De Simone. Uh, just I hear uh, work at night. And realizing this is happening here underground, it's a lot of legend town. So I just just point out something that should be considered. Is there any blasting that has to occur? Any hole ramming? Especially when I hear off hours. Just something to consider. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. <coughs> okay, so. Join I was just going to yes, say, we do have our construction um, supervisor. His <coughs> name is Matt Baines with us this evening, so he can just uh, share a little bit about what we would like to do in the future. Yep. So um, just so you guys are aware, when we put out the contract, we made a lot of flexibility in night work and day work, um, just with consideration for the residents, because there is a lot of ledge out there. It probably will be all taken out with the whole ramp, so it will be pretty loud. Um, and that flexibility, it, it allows us people, you know, they have an issue with the noise, we can switch to a day crew, you know, for however long the stretch may be. So that's kind of how we plan to, to What about, that. Uh, now the other thing is, is traffic. You know, that's a main thoroughfare for people getting off of 495, mm -hmm. heading up into all the towns west mm -hmm. and south street there's a we have a lot of yes. a lot of uh, workers up in up in that area so I, I hope that's also taken into consideration yes so also in the contract that went out to bid the contractors are fully responsible for the traffic plans which means they have to hire their own engineer and come up with their own stamp plans i know the dot portion is going to require that so the contractor is going to be held for the entire job to put that together and those will work day or night. So, Mr. Camillo, who, who do we have that uh, can review some of the traffic plant and the mitigation for that during this construction? Do we, you know, I'm putting my planning board hat on right now from before to make sure that um, that what they come up with is something that uh, that might be able to work. Because you know, we live in the town; we know it in some of our. Uh, reviewers might be able to uh, shed light on some of these things. Yes, um, we have two options. If uh, if we determine that the plans can be reviewed internally, we rely on staff. Uh, if we require outside review, there are engineers who are contracted with the town to do the peer review work. Okay. Mr. Chair, yes. the contract I just mentioned, the gentleman mentioned that they put it out to bid. So you've received bids to do this work? Our bid is currently down to four contractors. So we collected bids from all of our Eversource approved contractors. Was there a timeline included in that bid process? There was, and 
we're no longer going to meet that timeline. Yeah. So I've given the estimate of eight months, which does not include the break at the winter moratorium. So a project, if it got going this year, would have to stop November 15th and it wouldn't start again until April 15th. Yeah, so my assumption would be that the timeline won't come close now based on us not willing to, my senses, we haven't voted yet, but my senses, we're not gonna support this, uh, which would kind of blow up that construction schedule. Mm -hmm. So the schedule was to get it done this year, and that was a big portion of the contract, but in order to put that out to bid, we have to give them a period of time, and that was eight months. So we can still hold them to eight months, but with the break of the winter, we're not going to be able to get it done okay. this year. My that, oh, I'm just was going to say that this has been in planning stage for quite some time. Um, we've certainly met with your town officials, um, working on a lot of the uh, street crossings. You know, discussing you know uh, just where we could place this conduit along the road, knowing that there's a lot of water sewer, um, you know, access to businesses and other things that we had to consider. So there was quite a number of meetings before we actually got to tonight's hearing. So I think after we close the hearing on this mm -hmm. topic, mm -hmm. and we're still on the Eversource agenda item, we can talk about a couple of other things. Okay. Um, but I, for right now, uh, I think your construction schedule is going to get messed up. Okay. And I, actually, I'd like to open it back up if there's anybody, any of, okay, from the uh, from the town. I just I just noticed that there were some May I? Yes. Uh, Butters, come on. Can <laughs> A little bit out of order, but we didn't have any I apologize. Issues. I came in a few minutes late. I was at the wrong building. Uh, Paul Fitzgerald with Delhi and C on South Street. So, as you mentioned, we have. Um, and I apologize. I came in late. I probably missed a few things. Uh, within the information, I saw 27 manholes within a couple different streets. So, certainly curious of what's going on on South Street. So, without belaboring the meeting, is there more information that I can get from a kind of a context of the South Street work? As well as schedule, et cetera. So we have a, you know, we have seven buildings on South Street with six thousand employees. I'd like to understand what the work is, when it is, what the traffic detail is going to look like, what the impact of the street is going to be. Do we have a lot of people coming up uh, to go to work on the street? So that would all be finalized during the pre-construction phase. How many manholes on South Street? I'd say it's eighteen, eight, nine on South Street, something. Oh, yeah. I'd have to count exactly. Okay, so it's north fifteen. All right, so yeah, it's it's split. Okay, we let's see, Street. We'd rather than have this. Let's um, uh, um, Elaine or Norman, can you see if uh, we can send something out to uh, Mr. Fitzgerald and uh, Heavy help. Dell EMC as they are. Uh, yeah, I'm certainly cooperate with the work. We just want to get an understanding of the of the yeah. schedule and the, the impact. Yes, um, I, I, again, I think the based on the comments I received from town staff. The plans that have been submitted at this point are conceptual. Mm -hmm. um, all the aspects of the project that the board has raised as um, significant concerns um, have not yet been provided to the town. For example, we have identified that a traffic management plan needs to be prepared and presented to the town for review uh, prior to the pre-construction meetings. Uh, similarly, we need to see the detailed construction plans. We have not seen them. Um, again, as we've also recommended to the board, we are suggesting that a much more, um, um, much, much more, um, uh, in, in much more um, robust explanation be given to the public with regards to the the night work, and from our perspective, that will require holding a public hearing. Okay, very good. Yeah, that'd be helpful. Thank you. Thanks for coming along. Okay. Okay, so we hit. Uh, Opponents, we hit uh, everybody from the town. Any questions? Any more questions from, from you guys? Okay. All Mr. Right. Chair, I hear I move that we close the public hearing. Sorry. Mr. Chair, yes. if I may, I, I recommend that the board continue the <coughs> hearing unless the board believes that you have received enough information at this point to mm -hmm. act on the. I think we can act best. on the request, yes. I, vote the, I move that we close the public hearing. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, opposed? Stay. Did you lie? I did. Oh, sorry. Okay, it's unanimous. Okay, so we're closed. Okay, well, let's, uh, let's discuss. Please. Um, so, 
So I've been involved as a planning board member, a member of the personnel committee on the board of selectmen now for my ninth year. I uh, really involved at all different levels of town government since 2000. And I don't ever remember sitting in a public meeting and saying no to Eversource in all my years and all the thousands of votes that I've cast over the years, you know, on behalf of the community. And I'm frustrated by it, um, as you can probably tell. Um, but, you know, I think the town has kind of reached uh, its, it, it, its threshold uh, for tolerance with respect to uh, how things have kind of transpired here in the last six months. Um, so until we can vastly improve the relationship, until we can uh, solve the Elm Street situation, and until we reach a final conclusion on what's going to happen on Wilson Street, uh, I just think we have to stop. Uh, anything and everything specific to Eversource moving forward in Hopkinton. Um, and that's really unfortunate that I say that, and and I do feel bad about it. But you know, sometimes we got to make take a take a stand and make some uh, tough decisions to help the overall community. And right now, uh, you know, here we are, several weeks later. I don't feel any better about the Elm Street situation than I did a month ago. Um, I. I think it's appropriate to say that uh, earlier this evening, the Board of Selectmen voted to formally oppose the siting of a gas gate station on Elm Street, or West Elm Street, was it? Yeah. Elm Street in Hopkinton. And uh, we've engaged town council to that effort, or for that effort. Um, you know, so we got a long road in front of us here, and um, Eversource needs to, to, to recognize it's time to figure this all out and not just one project multiple projects multiple relationships multiple issues in the community as simple as changing out some poles that we've been talking about for years uh, to uh, more complex matters that involve a lot of engineering and coordination on the gas gate station uh, as well as on Wilson Street so we got a lot in front of us and uh, for right now I'm out and uh, hope someday I can re-engage Sorry. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's that's one of the things, you know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Herr was talking about these polls that we've been talking about literally for years. Um, you know, it's been at least two or three years that every time anything comes up before us, my first question is, what's going on with the double polls? And this is the first time in at least a year and a half to two years that there's been any discussion that a meeting actually happened. Um, and this is a preliminary meeting. Um, but this isn't a straw that broke the camel's back. It's, it's more of a, a, a steel beam that broke the camel's back here when we start looking at the gas gate uh, station and things of that nature. And understanding that you know, the gas and electricity are two different sides of the house, uh, you know, there needs to be a little bit more of a, uh, I guess, a community effort here and, and uh, you know, being good neighbors with each other. And, uh, you know, I... I just get the feeling, I feel that nothing's ever done unless it needs to be done to, to, uh, to benefit Eversource. And, uh, you know, something, something needs to come back around now. So uh, I'm certainly not willing to uh, take any action on this uh, until we start seeing some results and get some commitment. Yeah, I feel the same way, um, with the exception of I haven't been on the board for nine years. Uh, I've only been on for a year, but I've been around the town for a little bit. And it's something as small as these polls. If you can see that it, it's got the board's dander up on such a small issue as these polls, it's a direct reflection of, of in my eyes, of your company that you haven't done anything on these polls. And I understand you say that Verizon owns the polls and it's just your wires, and but. When I saw that Legacy Farms was, you know, going to be held up for, you know, potentially a year if this certain poll didn't get moved, and it got moved three or four days later, it's to me it's like a scare tactic. We can't do it. We can't do it. Well, you have to do it, and when you don't do it, you bring up bad relations, and yeah, we have had a good relationship with Comgas, NSTAR all these companies that are now Eversource for years and 
it's deteriorated and you know we're doing everything we can to try to make our town look nice and to be safe um, the proposal of this gas gate on Elm Street I think lacks a hundred percent common sense I don't know whoever thought of it I don't care how many years you went to college to be an engineer the fact that you want to put it next to a school in a neighborhood is one of the most ridiculous ideas that I've come across um, and the fact that you just can't get polls done like you can't I've been a selectman only for a little bit more than a year and it's ridiculous that you can't get these done and I'm not going to sit here and rip you because I know that you're not the one that's that's making the decisions to do it or not do it and I'm sorry that you're the the uh, the recipient I know it's your job I know and uh, I don't mind uh, spouting off a little bit but uh, I'm like these guys said I'm out 100% until until we see some some common sense and some action so uh, I'm out I feel like we're on that uh, TV show yeah, Shark and Tank. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and uh, I, I've got the, I've got an easy job just because I can I can echo the um, the sentiments of my uh, board mates here. Um, it's uh, when I was on the planning board, the same thing would happen. Oh, we just have to expand this thing, please. Just let us go. Yes, we will set up a meeting. The meetings don't happen. Um, it just just like the, the Legacy Farms one. Same thing, we have to move a poll. We've moved, okay, we're gonna look at the other polls, nothing happens. And again, it's a big company, but um, somebody somewhere has gotta have enough weight to be able to fix these things um, because it's a reflection on, on just the way the company may work. Um, promises may come up about something else when we start talking about uh, the changes on Wilson Street or, or this, this, the gas gate that we're opposing. Um, what if pro pro uh, promises come, come on those things? and and nothing happens. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I I concur with my uh, with the rest of the board. So, okay, anybody care me to make a motion to that effect, Mr. Hara? I move that we take no action on the request. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. How do you vote? Aye. 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 Okay, Mr. Kamalo, it's unanimous. So we got to take no action on this this time. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. And thank you for the public for stepping. All right. Public hearing on the water and sewer rate hearing. Okay. Can, oh, no, do we have to wait two minutes? minutes? We have to wait two more minutes. Okay. Okay. Number 11, you're in transfers. Oh, yeah, Mr. Kamal, do you think we can hit your in transfers for three minutes? Um, yes, we can. Um, Where's that? I'm sorry. Yeah. Number nine. Board of Selectmen will consider approving the FY17 year-end transfer requests. Yes. We included in the board packet uh, the votes already taken by the Appropriations Committee. Uh, this is an administrative request. Uh, board does this action uh, every year-end. Uh, in addition to I, should, I need to point this out. In addition to the items that are listed in the memo that was included in your packet, uh, we have received a request from the DPW. Um, give me one second. John, with an email. Yes, we have received an, a request from the DPW to add to the listed two items. Uh, $30,000 from the waste collection uh, to highway expenses. Uh, this will account for unexpected expenses through the year. For example, <coughs> $20,000 that was used to fund the Hayden Road traffic study, um, as well as um, monies that have been put in, into the following projects, uh, strategic planning process that is being undertaken um, by department staff. Uh, as well as uh, miscellaneous or various uh, vehicle repairs. So there's $30,000 from waste collection to highway expenses. There's also an additional $100,000 from stormwater systems to highway expenses. And in fact, this is, this is going to, uh, Mr. Chair, this, this may be important to you, this is actually going to uh, pay for the low-hanging 
um, solutions that were included in the hate and road traffic improvement process. So, I like that one. again, in addition to the items that I identified in the memo, we have two from highway uh, totaling one third, sorry, from DPW. Okay. okay. Mr. Chair, I approve the motion, uh, to, or I approve the uh, I motion that we approve uh, the year end FYF 17 year end transfer requests as presented by the town manager. You have a second. Second. Any further discussion, Mr. Stein? Yeah, I have a question. Um, the amount that's being transferred, I'm sorry, uh, the last the last two that aren't written down here, I didn't hear where they were coming from, but at least the ones that we have documented here, it's $251,000. It's all coming out of employee benefits, health insurance. Uh, could you tell me what that $250,000 represents as a percentage of the uh, full budget in that bucket? The health insurance line item is approximately six million. Yes. I can get you a, a, a more definite amount. So it's about four percent. That would be correct. Um, and the, I'm sorry, the other two items were they coming out of health insurance also? No. Um, okay. Thirty thousand is coming from waste collection. Okay. Remember when we negotiated the contract, there were savings. Mm -hmm. And then the one hundred thousand is coming from stormwater systems, mm -hmm. and this was money that. We had earmarked for um, uh, the liberties payment, <coughs> and because we're not performing that work this year, we've decided to redirect that money to pay for the low hanging improvements um, that we discussed. Is, the is there a, a quick? Is there, uh, I guess, just a quick or brief rationale for how we were off by uh, four percent? And is there more? Is there more money that was? allocated to health insurance that is going into free cash or something like that. Uh, how, how far off were we in our allocation? I, I and believe. Why? And why? Here's why. Uh, I think I'll start with the, with the obvious. We, we were pretty diligent in negotiating with the health insurance provider. Mm -hmm. uh, number two, we also instituted uh, certain measures that it resulted in additional savings. For example, we did wellness programs that we didn't pay for, uh, but rather were paid for mm -hmm. by, by the provider. And um, we also had projected, overall we had projected a higher increase than now. Okay. What the negotiations and, came down to. And is $251,000 the extent of the over allocation in the budget, or is there more out there that's going into free cash? I would wish there was more. Uh, we still have some months to go before the end of the fiscal year. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, can I add one important reason that uh, Mr. Kamau, Kamau forgot or uh, failed to mention is that it's all predicated on the number of participants and additional participants that sign up during the year or drop it during the year. So mm -hmm. you're always going to be a little bit of a guess. I don't think that this is how the the amount of the that we were off was um, by any means uh, a large amount mm -hmm. of percentage-wise. Yeah. Excellent. That's a no, I'm good. Mr. Hart. All set. All set. Excellent. So, so the uh, uh, having discussion, uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Excellent. Thanks so much. All right. Then what's the... Come here. Uh, you're right. Let's open the public hearing on uh, water and sewer rate. For a second, we will set water and sewer rates for fiscal year eight, 2018. All right, we got the, the crew already up there. So moved. Second. So All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. Mr. Kamalo, please start us off. Y yes. Um, Per town bylaws and regulations, the selectmen set the water and sewer rates. Uh, this is an annual event, and our goal always is to get the rates set before the beginning of the next fiscal year. Uh, over the years, we have had the benefit uh, to work th with the Abrahams Group uh, in reviewing our water and sewer enterprise budgets. Uh, and they are here with us tonight to uh, make the presentation. Uh, I will also mention that the 
the product or the work that is in front of you today would not have been possible without the um, excellent work done by um, the DPW team, Eric Kachi, who is the water manager, uh, John Westerling, your DPW director, and most importantly, we have also brought in the brain power um, um, of the CFO, uh, Chris Sandini, uh, to help in peer reviewing and checking the work that, uh, that the Abrahams groups uh, present to us. Uh, and with your permission, Mr. Chair, let Mr. Abrahams uh, present the thanks water and sewer. Thanks for coming again. Okay. Yeah. Good evening. Thanks for having us. And Mr. Kamala, thank you for the nice words. Just a question to the, to the chair. Are you able to see the PowerPoint presentation? Yes. It looks like it's yes. over there. Yeah. Well, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we will go through the slides. Um, up in, we'll, we'll do the, we'll, we'll focus on water first and maybe we'll take a quick break when we're done with water and then go to sewer after that. Okay, great. Um, so in front of you on the screen, you see the water budget FY17 compared to 18 with a difference column off to the right. Town meeting approved the FY18 water budget, which includes the use of about $50,000 in retained earnings. And certified retained earnings for FY, at the end of FY16 was about one point, just under $1.4 million. <clears throat> this, this slide shows water projections. So we take a look at the upcoming fiscal year and also the four fiscal years that follow. We project revenues and we project expenditures for each of them. We compare the two and we track retained earnings based on where it's projected to be at the end of FY17 and then projected all the way through these five fiscal years as well. This is our baseline scenario. It includes no rate changes. So we're assuming rates remain level in this scenario. And you can see as you look at the bottom two rows that retained earnings, although healthy currently and projected to be at the, F at the end of FY18, um, will deplete or are projected to deplete by the end of the five-year window that we are looking at. What should be the target for retained earnings? Best practices recommend about uh, 10 to 25 percent of the operating budget um, as an operating reserve. And in addition, we recommend a capital reserve approximating the cost of a large capital asset in case it needs to be replaced on an emergency basis. The water operating budget is about $2.2 million. So 10 percent is about 220,000, 25 percent about 550,000. Uh, the capital item may cost about 250,000. So Together, we're recommending a minimum of about $470,000. So options for water rates. Option one, no rate changes. So the same projections that we saw a few slides ago show here for all five fiscal years that we analyzed. And in addition, down below, you'll see the current yearly bill of some users that we focused on. The average residential user pays about $240. $244 yearly for his or her water. Option two, presenting what a 1% rate increase projects to look like over the five-year period. This would be 1% in each of the five years that, were, that we analyzed. And you see the same current bill analysis, but also projections for the new bills over the five-year period. And if you focus on the current bill compared to the next year's bill, it's about $2 difference per year for the average residential user. Option three, same presentation, just with a 2% rate increase in each of the five years. And it projects out to a healthy retained earnings balance in year five. And focusing on the average residential user, we're looking at about a $5 increase on a yearly basis in the yearly bill. And Mr. Chair, those are all the slides we have on water. Would you like to discuss water now or move on to sewer? No, let's just discuss water. Let's, let's keep them. Keep them separated just like the, the lines we keep them separated too. <coughs> so, uh, hey, Mr. Uh, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Abrams Group always does an excellent job presenting this information to us in a very uh, straightforward manner and makes it easy with all these numbers on the screen there uh, prior to it going blank. Um, makes it easy for us to see kind of where we're headed. My sense is while uh, retained earnings, you know, with that goal of 25% or that, whatever that number was, for the next three years, we're very healthy. You know, years four and five out from this year, it gets a little dicey. In fact, we go underneath, I think, in five year, in the fifth year. But, you know, we can correct that next year or the two years from now. 
or the three years from now, and then we can throw 1% in or 2% in at that time. So my inclination would not be to change the water rates at all for the next fiscal year because uh, we're certainly healthy for three years out, if not four, reasonably so in the fourth year. Um, but uh, we can address it next year or the year after. <clears throat> but an excellent presentation about you know, how we should think, think it through. Yeah. Thank you. Still, sir. Yep, same thing. I, f I feel the same thing. If we have a chance to, if we're looking, you know, if, if it looks rather healthy there, then uh, I don't mind uh, foregoing, uh, you know, kind of put a, a stop to raising anything this year and take another look at it next year. Maybe we have to go up a little bit more next year if we have to, but maybe we don't. Maybe we come into, into a way of, uh, of, of making some more money and, and so we don't have to raise it. So I'm, I'm good with it, with, it, uh, with it staying as it is, but again, it's another, I appreciate the, the work you did to this and, and, uh, and from the relationship that we've had last year when I got voted in, I sat in the basement in the town hall with you and you explained everything to me and brought me right up to speed. And, uh, all the confidence in the world in you guys. You guys do a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, like we said at the last meeting, um, we're not voting on we're not voting on the rate for five years. We're voting on it for this year. Mm -hmm. And if we're looking at a zero percent increase, you know, having us be at sixty five percent of of the budget for the retained earnings, you know, I mean, it can't possibly justify increasing rates. <laughs> I don't see how sitting tight this year impacts our ability to do our capital work over the next 12 months, or even 24 months for that matter. I don't think it's, I don't think we're handcuffing our, ourselves in any way here. Um, but you know, why it's, whether it's five bucks, 10 bucks, or a hundred bucks, let's leave it in the pockets until. Right, and that's the same way I see it. Even, you know, even in 2019, where it's still at, uh, you know, almost 53%, and in 2020, we're still at 34%, which is still higher than the numbers that, that, uh, uh, that you're, that you're um, asking for, um, and I just and I also appreciate it. And, that, and this is and I think then the townspeople appreciate to see see it uh, presented so succinctly. You know exactly what zero brings us, one percent, what two percent brings us, and then what going are, out five years. What are the assumptions on the projects, uh, the project spending over the next you know future years? Are you talking about capital capital work? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So when we're when we're saying in 2019 it'll be down to 52 and a half percent, and then 34 percent. What's the assumption on our on our capital work and spending? We well, for you, Mr. Chair, we have a in, in the report we have a breakdown of the capital pro uh, the capital items and the capital projects that are planned over the five year period. Mm -hmm. I can speak about some of those if you would like. Sure. Okay. Um, for FY nineteen, what's planned? There's uh, just under three hundred thousand planned to be spent on um, Cedar Street Water Main. There's $1.5 million in Fruit Street Wellfield improvements that year, uh, $1 million in additional pipeline improvements in Hopkinton, um, another water main replacement for Hayden Road that's just, just over $700,000, and then a few smaller items in FY19 that are each less than $100,000. And then getting out to FY20, you're looking at um, updating the GIS for about $100,000 to two vehicles that year and also construction of a high service system that's about $3 million. So this is, this is a pretty extensive plan, a pretty comprehensive plan. And any items that are on the larger side in terms of dollars, we projected debt related to those. Mm -hmm. And all those projections are included in the analysis. I guess, you know, one of the things we need to look at here is, um, you know, what do we, how do we view the obligation of the ratepayers? Is it to be funding the here and now today uh, or is it going to be forward-looking or backward-looking? And we know that we're not backward-looking. But the fact that we have retained earnings and we're looking at you know, this, this percentage of the operating budget as we move forward, it tells me that you know, any, any uh, action to increase, we're looking at today's ratepayers paying for tomorrow's projects, um, which you know, I, personally I don't agree with that philosophy. Um, you know, for someone who lives in town today to necessarily be paying for a project tomorrow. Um, it's a little bit more transparent in this case as opposed to the overall town budget because we have a line item here just saying, you know, return, retained earnings balance. 
Um, whereas in the town budget, when we go back every year, we say, oh, you know, we got this money that, you know, is free cash. And it was approved as free cash. It was basically retained earnings from the prior year's budget. It was money that uh, we, we taxed, but we didn't need. Um, but everybody's just happy to have it there to help, you know, reduce the taxes for the coming year. <laughs> But in this case, again, it's a little bit more transparent, and uh, you know, I, I just I just don't see that it's our position, uh, or I don't think that it's uh, appropriate for us to to be uh, trying to keep keep that balance so high uh, for the future years. Excellent. Okay, for the comments, so the chair will entertain a motion to. Uh, if we, can I go right into that, Mr. Collins? No, do you want to no, read that? No, okay. I think so, we, yes, we'll, oh, okay. we'll have to okay. yeah, move so, on, over to Suwa, close yeah. the public hearing. Uh, if there are any public comments, you may also receive public comments at this point on water. Okay. Can, can I ask a quick it? question before sure. we go to the public? Um, so we're, I think, advocating, it sounds like, you know, uh, there's consensus to hold flat for this year. Uh, for FY18, right? Um, and we don't think, from our perspective anyway, that impacts the ability to get capital work done that we need done and so on. Do you guys, are you okay with that? Is the DPW's water department okay with that assumption the board is making that we're going to be fine if we hold off a year? Through the chair. Trip, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. And Eric's good with that too? Yes. We've, we've got a We've got a budget that contains the capital needs that we currently have for this year. As Mr. Selectman Sestari said, we've got future build-out years and future capital needs. We can address those in future town meetings and future rate hearings. But we believe that, uh, how do you argue with the 65% retained? Right. Uh, that so, being I've said, got, so I've got a question, I, actually. I, uh, that's, what's I'm what's the effect if we, if we go down a percent? That, that's just what I was going to say. Yeah, I know that's something that, that, that people never even talk about. Because it's funny, when we're talking about the rate setting options, nobody has down there, okay, you know, what'd you say? With the, the Let's do an underwrite on the water rates. Yeah. No, but yeah, but you guys exactly. said you said 25% is what, what, is what you like to see going, going out. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm saying if we're at 65%, well, why can't we be at 52 this year and 34 next? And then if we need to go up 2%, like, why not say this actually, you know, having the newspaper tomorrow, hey, um, you know, Hopkinton reduced theirs by 1% or 2%. Well, I, you know, will, will that impact anything? Because looking at the retained earnings, it's, we're looking really healthy. And when we looked that, that healthy at the town budget, we did an underwrite. And just to, to Mr. Hurst's point, you know. So through the chair, uh, we are in such a healthy position because of, recent development, in particular the Muse, uh, they paid, They decided that they wanted to pay off their water permits all up front. So that was a windfall for us, so we benefited okay. from that. Uh, my fear is that there may not be future <coughs> windfalls like that, and we may not find ourselves in such a healthy position. And if we do reduce rates, which is certainly an option, my, my concern is that in future years, we're going to have to, instead of look at 1 or 2 percent, we might be up at 6 or 10 or higher percent. So it, it levels out the, the rate structure. Where, where were we last year at this time when we were looking at the different options? As far as retained earnings? Yeah, what were our retained earnings? Actual or projected? Actual. We, we can certainly find it. Yeah. I mean, you know, if last year we were at 60% and now we get this windfall and we're at 65%, I have zero problem with reducing the rates. If last year we were at 10% and we got this windfall and now we're at 65%, well then certainly I think we need to think twice before we were to take that type of action. I'd love to reduce them like 5%. Let's do something meaningful. You know, 1% is 5 bucks or 10 bucks or whatever, yeah. but 5%, you know, people go out. But it's at least heading in the right program. direction, though. We're, we're, even if one, two, three, five percent is, you know, we're well, heading in, in the direction. It stays with our mindset. Of well, exactly. It shows it that, yeah, we, we don't, we don't, don't believe that the taxes always have to go up. Right. <laughs> you know, they can come down, too. So, Mr. Chairman, we're looking yes. for that information. Great. Thank you. Mr. 
Mr. Westling, is there anything you'd like to talk about to fill the dead air? <laughs> How's the... Uh, well, I appreciate uh, the rain. Mr. That Chair. Our, <laughs> yes. I, have that, <laughs> I have that information for you. Um, for water retained earnings, it was very low last year. It was about $24,000 about this time. And as Mr. Westling already said, the reason for the big jump, the main reason for the big jump is that, that one-time payment that one time windfall that he already discussed. What do you think? No reduction. So three, Mr. Chairman, we, we, mm -hmm. were, no reduction. Okay. we were very tight last Speak year. Up. And we were Let's looking see. at uh, nominal increases one, two percent last year. Uh, but again, the views, because they determined that it would be in their best interest to pay all of those permit fees up front. Otherwise, we would have had, a, our previous schedule had it incrementally coming in over several years. Mm -hmm. So so we've got we've got this windfall. Um, and it's as a result of having more users online as well. Um, so if we stay flat, we're looking at, if we stay flat, we're looking at um, the 65.2%, correct? Yes. So again, I'm wondering what's the projection if we go down a percent or go down 2%? Is it going to be the opposite, just the opposite of uh, FY19, or, or I guess double of FY19, or? Looking to Will we end up being at 39%? Can I just add one Absolutely. thing? I think we're going under an assumption which may or may not be true that after retained earnings is spent down that we'll only have to go up 1% or 2% yeah. in order to maintain the healthy level that we're seeking. That may not be true. Um, you may be looking at a larger increase. I believe uh, several years ago, there was a substantial increase in order to get us healthy again. And I'd hate to see us do something. Okay, but we need to we need to see numbers, though. We can't just you know go on speculation. Uh, you know, but it, but when we're looking at sixty five percent, I have a difficult time justifying moving forward with that. And I'm more I'm more apt to. If I had to take a vote tonight, I'd be more apt to blindly go, let's drop it a percent, as opposed to sticking flat and, and taking the taxpayers' money when, when it doesn't seem like we need to. If I may, I think what may be instructive, Mr. Sestari, is how we moved from uh, only, was it 24,000 in retained earnings last year to 1.4? and that happened within a very short uh, period of time as well as if you look at the projections from 2018 in four years time we're in the negative that's so but that's so that's assuming so me, that's assuming we stay flat for five years straight and we're not we're not voting on the next four years we're only voting on this year I agree I'm only highlighting the fact that the swings can be Substantial mm -hmm. within a very short period of time. So, can I ask this I question? What was our windfall that we that we received from Legacy? No, I, 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 from, I re use, from use. I remember two big checks. One was for one million dollars. Okay. No. Yeah. I thought it was one. I thought when we went over, it was one point two million dollars. Yeah, yeah. one point two is ringing a bell as well. Yeah, I so, that's so if if we didn't get those checks, then we would be at two hundred and ten thousand uh, dollars for retained earnings. Something something in that. Yes. And yeah. which we can do about a quick math on in terms of about how much that would be in retained earnings. About 8%. Yeah. Okay. Um, and now that 1.2 million. It's actually could be 6. 6% 6 instead of 8. Good. Yeah. Now 1.2 million is written for the purpose of. Um, they, they it was just a permit, those were just permit fees through the chair, those were yes. permit fees, so they come into the general revenue of the department. Okay. So while, it, you know, it's obviously covering covering our costs for processing and all that, um, I mean, I hate saying this, but it's kind of free money coming in, because we've got those people working anyway, right? Well, and they're going to be buying water. The, the, these new customers are going to be right. buying water. Right. So, so, so they're going to be covering their costs of water. Got more people who are paying into these capital improvements that are being made. 
So, I mean, I guess again, I, you know, I need to I need to see some projection on if we go minus one percent, what's it look like for fiscal year eighteen? You know, and I'd like to see minus two percent too. I would see you minus two percent. Love to see minus five percent. I don't know if that's too extreme, you know, but. You know, we need to see some scenarios on either side so that at the very least we can extrapolate and say, okay, well, if it's minus 1%, it's this, and, you know, if it's minus 2, it's that. Um, but we need to see these scenarios. Mr. Uh, Kamal, do we have to make a decision me? tonight? No. The board can make the decision at its next meeting on the 20th. So, actually, the chair would entertain a motion. Oh, no, no, we'll wait yeah. until, until, but I'd like to uh, look at the other. Uh, so well, as far as the sewer goes, I, when I no, we're going to go to the sewer in a little bit. We'll yeah, well, sewer. what I'm saying is that we've already had these numbers put before us. We already our last meeting, we already looked at these numbers. Not the minuses. No, I know. I the so yeah, we, what's the difference from this? So this it, from it, two if weeks we just ago. go over the same thing that we heard, I mean, if we're going to go over the sewer, the, these numbers that we went over at the last meeting, what's the sense if we're not going to vote on anything tonight? Why don't we just continue the whole thing until our next meeting? Yeah, I mean, this that's seems that's to be the same information we looked at two weeks ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, but it was preliminary, and we had to hold a public hearing as part of the process. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, let's, let's get some, when I see if we can get some input from the, uh, from the, from the townspeople. There's anybody here that wants to step up and <laughs> yeah, from the this is a dynamic topic that yeah. people are clamoring to get to the microphone. <laughs> hey, we have one. Can we hit yeah. take That's because he uses a lot of water. <laughs> <laughs> Please step to the mic, sir. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> anytime I get a chance. So I, I don't I'm know sorry, still, your name and address, please. I don't know if I can still say new fire chief. That's why I'm how long I can get away with that, but um. I heard John's um, update on the capital planning, and it sounds good. And the capital planning is important. You know, the, the Hayden Row water main is really in rough shape. And when we get down to the lower end of Hayden Row, when we have a fire, we literally drain Teresa Road and some others. And it sounds like they have a plan on work on that. I just want to make sure, long term planning, we don't get ourselves in a hole. Um, we haven't extended our system at all. There's a lot of the rural area of town that's operating on cisterns and stuff like that. So this is just kind of a nice opportunity for me. I'm just kind of getting at that piece of the pie in my plans to try to address. And um, and I just want to make sure we have some dialogue of, do we have the ability to extend some of our system to rural areas of the town? Um, some of the newer developments, they're asking that question now, and they help get build loops and everything. And I just, in your capital planning, I kind of, want to make sure that we don't make it so five years from now it will be really difficult to either put in a high pressure water main or a new water main or something so it sounds like it is getting addressed but i and i just haven't had the opportunity to get some real tight dialogue with john that we're addressing that yet it is a goal of mine in the future we're about to receive um an iso rating uh review in the first time in about 10 or 15 yes. years and what that does is it they look extensively at their water main, their service, their investment, and uh, set um, some of the insurance rates for the homeowners, the people that don't live in this system, pay a lot of money for fire insurance. So it, it's just, it's a big picture there. I hope we're evaluating all that. It sounds like we are, but I, I'm just, I need to get more of this dialogue yeah, Chief, going. Yeah, certainly, I don't, think, I don't think the board is talking about, you know, cutting back on any of the suggested capital projects. Okay. Um, but I think what I'd, what I'd like to see is a more dynamic plan where, you know, first of all, we look at this range uh, on the retained earnings, try to keep our balance between the 10 and 25 percent from year to year, uh, you know, and the board can set what we want that to be, whether we want it to be at the 10 percent side or the 25 percent side. Um, but then using what our planned capital projects are from year to year, I'd like to see a suggestion over the next five years, okay, to stay at 25%, you can go 0% now or minus 3% now, uh, you know, and that puts you in this range. But then with the next year's projects, you know, we're going to need to go to a 1% increase from there and then maybe a 2% the following year or something to that effect. You know, something that, something that has a couple more variables in there where we're not just 
looking at a plan and saying, yeah, if we say zero now and we do it and we say zero for the next five years, this is what it's going to be. Right? We need to see something more dynamic. Okay. So thanks. Thank you. Thanks for stepping up. <clears throat> okay. So, you know, I, I'm going to. Can I his. can I make a motion to mm -hmm. um, continue it? To continue this meeting on our, you know, to stop deliberation now until we get more of the information that we need and and uh, pick it up on the next meeting. If, through the chair, I I, I see the in doing that. However, I want to be sure that there are no additional comments on SUA that may be similar to the comments we just received. Uh, because the numbers in SUA are the same numbers that we provided. And assuming that the board uh, is not anticipating or asking us to make any other scenarios regarding SUA, I would agree with you. I think we've seen the numbers on the SUA, and I think they're conceptually similar to what we're looking at here. And I think that we were. I think that our comments at the last meeting were, uh, you know, level fund, keep it at, at zero. But um, we can. Uh, I'm just. That's, I'm one guy out of the out of the board. So I'll leave it up to the rest of the board to make that decision. Yeah, I mean, it seems to me that the decisions are basically predicated on the same type of data and the same same scenarios. And we just need to see. We need to see more scenarios that we can evaluate. Including so, negative scenarios of one percent, two percent, and five percent, and and if we and if we have these projections of what the capital uh, the capital projects are going to be over the next five years, well, let's actually use that, and let's actually look at suggested uh, suggested scenarios. I mean, if if the board now wants to give direction and say we want to try to keep we want to treat try to keep our retained earnings at twenty five percent. Uh, from one year to the next, you know that can be some direction that we that we give, so that in the next meeting it's something that's a little mm -hmm. more productive for us. Exactly. So, so just if I could, real quick, just uh, and maybe folks from the Abrams group don't, don't see all this. Um, you know, Hopkinton. We had our town meeting recently, and we passed an eighty-two, eighty-three million dollar budget in about five minutes flat. Um, and then we went into other articles and we went through some different uh, discussions and then we got to the underride uh, article and we passed that in about four minutes flat and then at the polls um, where the underride was also uh, voted on as a ballot question it was one of the top vote getters of the year so Hopkinton is willing to spend money and willing to invest in the community when we need to and we do that with our budget we do that with other things but when we can leave the money in the taxpayers' pockets for a little bit while, a little longer, we do that too, and it's very well received by the community. And that's not to say if we cut it five percent this year that we can't cut it, raise it seven percent next year if we need to. I mean, we're not—they're not huge dollars for individual households, but it's the mindset of Hopkinton. It's building um, the trust. Yeah, it's that's building right. the trust. So we're it's just the mindset. We absolutely need it. So I think I'd like to see a five percent cut. You know, Todd raised an excellent point here early on to start this piece of the discussion and I think we should investigate it because we can raise it seven next year and they won't say a word because we cut it five this year as long as we're constantly ma maintaining the mindset of we'll leave it in your pockets until we need it and when we need it we're going to invest in ways where you're going to get a return Hopkinton responds to that extremely well so I'd like to see those scenarios um, if that increases the scope for the Abrams group so be it you know we got to deal with that too but let's let's get that done if we can through the chair uh, to follow up on Selectman Sestari's <coughs> question. Uh, we can run any of those scenarios, and we're happy to do that. And I think it'd be very easy for the Abrahams group to do. Uh, if you could give us some guidance on what that percentage is that you'd like us to hit. If it's 25%, we can certainly run the scenarios to, to show 25%. Um, yeah, I'm for going for 25%. Yep. Um, yep. And I don't know how the other board members feel about should we should we target that immediately? You know, even if that means you know whatever five or I'm not trying to forecast numbers, but that. five or ten percent <laughs> uh, drop, or do we want to say okay, let's get there over the next two years or something like that? That would be the only additional piece right. of information I think right. that we need to get. I don't want to drop as I don't want to drop as far as we went up as fast as we went up. 
because uh, then then we you know I don't I don't want to have to to, to uh, Mr. Hurst's point he might seven percent might be okay if something happens but I don't want to go up fifteen percent but but at the same time if we feel that we can rely on what these exactly. uh, capital projects are that are coming up we should be able to forecast okay if we do it and again I'm not trying to forecast anything but just being extreme if we say that okay we can drop rates twelve percent now. Um, you know, and we know these other projects are coming up, and it's going to mean that we have to increase two percent next year. I don't have any problem with that. If it's well, we dropped twelve percent now, but that means next year we're going to have to go up ten percent. Well, there's no sense in that. You know, I mean, just exactly. having it go down and then spike up. But again, if if we feel confident in the capital project uh, projection, then we should be able to see that. And, and, and if the, the numbers that, that you came up with were, you know, was at that 25% mark, then let's see, let's see what, what it takes for us to, to and then, get And then that 25% mm. there is for, you know, any of those other emergencies that, that come up. And, I mean, that's the purpose of it, you know. So we don't need to, you know, say, well, yeah, you know, I mean, it, it looks like it could be like this, but what if something comes up? That's what the money's there for. Yeah, so just use that 25%, whether it's 1, 2, 5, 7, 10%. Just, you know, because, you know, you, you were able to figure the... Uh, Should we take a vote on that? Just to make sure the board... No, 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 I'm just, oh, no, okay. I'm, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just giving the scenario. Because, because you, you, when you presented it to us, it was zero, one, two, going that way. So there must have been some, you know, that there was a, a thought of why, why zero, one, and two came in going up. So you guys must be able to put some, some to logic check. into what it would take to I, I can comment on that. The goal of the the one and the two percent scenarios were focused on not next year, not the year after, but the end of the five year window okay. and, and what the what the retain earnings projections were at that point. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, so so I understand the board's instruction as coming up with more dynamic scenarios. Um, you have suggested that we perhaps uh, target a 25% uh, level of retaining earnings, retained earnings, sorry. Uh, and in our, in our exercise, I think we, if we also think of other scenarios, we will add them to, to the modeling. Um, however, we, I, I think I do understand where, where the board is coming from. Um, I, I'm, I'm, somewhat conflicted. Um, one, we have always wanted the board to establish uh, an appropriate level of retained earnings. I'm hearing in some sense in that there's a desire to move in that direction and that 25% may be the number we target. Um, I, I don't expect the board to make that formal decision now because I think let's wait and see what the scenarios will inform us. Uh, I, I also realize that the the town's water infrastructure for the most part is aged and thus any projections we make now may be off point if just if if one if if one of our mains doesn't meet our expectations and and and, and we lose it now we will be in trouble that's my then, then, then why yeah. the recommendation of 25% if that's not enough? I mean, we're I hearing think recommendations of 10 to 25%, and if, because of the age of our system, one, one occurrence could blow that up, then that doesn't seem to be accurate. Yeah, let, let's speak to that. What we have been advised by the Abrahams Group is that we look at the, the most expensive okay. element of our infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and what I'm now suggesting to that discussion, we had to that discussion is question whether it's only one aspect. It could be two, it could be three, given the age of our infrastructure, is my point. I don't think infrastructure applies. Okay. And, 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 I, and I see the, uh, I'm looking at sewer over here. I see that come up with the, you know, the same dynamic. Let's, let's, you know, that's what I mean. I don't know. Do we have to make a motion on that, or do we can, can we keep this? I move that we continue the public hearing into the yep. June twentieth meeting, yep. where we'll look at additional um, scenarios and make a decision at that. On time. both water and sewer. On mean. both water and sewer. Okay, thank you. Yeah. There's no need for a motion. I think the instruction is clear that we'll continue the 
the hearing to the next meeting. Okay. Okay. Do yeah. we have a second to continue? We don't need a motion. We don't need a motion. We don't need a motion. We don't need a motion, yeah. we don't need a motion to continue. Okay. Okay. We do. okay. okay. Yeah. Don't need a motion for direction, though. How about for the direction of what we're looking for? I think it's pretty clear. Okay, yeah. but I just want to be clear. I just want to make sure everybody on the board's okay yeah. if we just saying 25%. We haven't voted on 25%. If I don't know if anybody feels like we should be targeting less, yeah. you know, or anything like that. Yeah. I'm okay with 25%, yeah. but I really want to see the difference. I want to see the dynamics. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Excellent. It doesn't have to be spot on either. Just yeah. right. Right. fluctuating. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 25% appears as a good number. I think it's a good target to, to, to aim for. However, I'm only concerned that we may lend new information to the board. Yeah. 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 Y
Uh, and we've gotten a copy of that to review while we were writing our own comments as well. Correct. Okay. And, and so that's included so, in that process. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry if I missed that's that. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. Mr. Hunt, any questions? Uh, the town Maria is referring to, I don't recall which town it was, basically it was all, all the information was flowing to the chair, I think, directly, or it was flowing to some other member, and it was basically a violation of the open meeting law. So by doing it this way, uh, Maria is the one who pulls it all together. Then one board member goes to the chair and gets with her and sits down and goes through it. I thought it went really well last year. Uh, she did a ton of the work. She really spent uh, a lot more time putting this together. And then she and I met in her office for maybe an hour, uh, maybe not even, probably a half hour twice, I think it was. Um, and then I went through everything and then it's signed and brought it to you guys. And then, Actually, no, went through it all, brought it to the board as an agenda item. Then I went back again and met with her, and we signed documents and so on. It, were, it was really smooth, and uh, she did a great job. And I think there were good reviews given to, to our key managers last year, and uh, I think we could have another good process this year. Thanks for working out the kinks. Beautiful. So what's, our, what's our target date for having things prepared and so that we can let these guys know if they have another job, so if they have a job another, for another year? So the fiscal year ends June 30th. Right, so I don't think we have to do it before June 30th because we're still in the same year. Um, and then I would think by the end of July, if that's possible, with vacations and everything else, it's probably reasonable. Because then, you know, it's kind of management 101. You get it done, you know, first quarter, first year, or new year, whatever, something like that. I think that's kind of where we were last year. It wasn't. It didn't drag on. That's what, that was the nice thing last year. It did not drag on. Because she held me. To, you know, she she kept. He kept after me to get in here and do the work. So. so you mentioned something about the flawed system and a violation of open meeting law. That was not, we did not have a flawed system, nor did we violate any open meeting law on this process, correct? It's not the town of Hopkinton. It was another town. All right. We yeah. had done things in the past that this new town, this other town, sort of brought to light that maybe we should not okay. do going forward. Okay. So. Okay. We didn't get we didn't get an open meeting law, meeting law violation yep. against us, yep. but we could have had we continued the same okay. process. Yeah, for for you know so that people know, you know obviously it's it's awkward uh, giving and I would imagine receiving evaluations in front of cam in front of the camera and in front of everybody in town, but that's only the tip of the iceberg on the awkwardness of the open meeting law when it comes to this process. Mm -hmm. And you know it's it's awkward. It can be cumbersome. Um, I don't I don't necessarily agree with all the hoops they make us jump through. But nonetheless, we need to keep the town uh, out of jail, you know, figuratively and literally, I guess. Uh, so um, yeah, and like I say, this is only it's only the tip of the iceberg that most people see. Okay. And so. then subsequent to that would be the goal setting, the FY yeah. eighteen goal setting. <clears throat> Yeah, so I remember going through this process last year, and I remember the same thing. Everything was, we confidently, um, I mean, confidentially, whatever that word is, uh, wrote that down, gave it to you, and then you compiled everything. And at that point, then we kind of sat as a board at a public meeting and made our decisions on what their actual goals were. You know, we, we limited it down to, the, to what it was. So... I'm, I'm glad that I misunderstood that because I, I couldn't imagine how we could have possibly done, had an open meeting violation on the transparency that we did that. Right. So I'm glad and, that I and misunderstood. And last, that. through the chair last year, we did not violate anything. Right. It, it all was done in accordance to the way it should be done. I think some other communities aren't catching up to us as quickly, but they're not our problem. That's right. We don't expect everyone to be as quick as us. Exactly. It would be unrealistic. <laughs> For us to assume that other towns are as confident as us. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming in. So, so I, yes. we, you would all would like me to send out the forms to each of you individually. Yes. All the forms. I'll send mm -hmm. you their last year's evaluation, their goals, which you had yes. established, mm -hmm. and then you know, ask you to return it in I don't know two two and a half weeks time. Yep. Does that? Sound reasonable to give me time to compile it mm -hmm. to bring it back for a public meeting? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, great. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. So, so that's on the review side, right? That's on the review side. And then on the goals for FY18, 
it was pretty much a similar process, yeah. but that was, I think, done live in a meeting. That was live in a meeting, and uh, the chiefs and town manager also brought their suggestion. Yeah, we all had collaboration. That was a live meeting thing. Then you documented what all that was, and we kind of codified it a little bit, organized it into you know, categories for each of the individuals, and then we all agreed Priority on a subsequent time. meeting, yeah. Yeah. and then we signed it, signed. and everyone took it from yeah. there. My Correct. suggestion that would be to mirror, slightly different, right? mirror whatever we did last year because it was so effective. Why not mirror it moving forward? Great, I can do that. Same time frames and everything. Yeah, we're, we're, ahead. we're doing better. Each year that I'm here, we do it a little earlier, which is great. That is the goal. That's good. That's you are the common denominator in making that happen. No, not necessarily, <laughs> but thank you. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, I, item 11, Cooperstown trip. The, uh, I will update the board on that trip to Cooperstown proposed by the 26.2 Foundation in support of the International Mar Marathon Center project. The, well, the bottom line here is the, the building of the International Marathon Center in Hopkinton is directly tied to and supports uh, Hopkinton's vision. You know, as, you know the, uh, for many people that don't, uh, that don't know the, uh, the Hopkinton's vision, um, Hopkinton is a vibrant community centrally located in New England and nestled 26.2 miles west of Boston. We're endowed with open space, natural resources, facilities, and programs that promote a well-educated and healthy community. We are respectful of our past, engaged in our present, and actively preparing for the future. The, this vision clearly lays out a path for our community's economic future, and a glimpse into that future may be experienced in Cooperstown, New York. Why Cooperstown, New York? Cooperstown, New York is a community of about 2,000 residents. And it's the best example anywhere of a small community that successfully handles visitors annually to several attractions that are located here, there, while maintaining its unique character. Those visitors contribute to Cooperstown's economic health and well-being. The attractions and institutions include, of course, the Baseball Hall of Fame, the Fenimore Art Museum, the Glimmerglass F Festival and its internationally acclaimed Opera Festival, and the Farmers Museum. The critical reason for visiting is to meet with representatives of local government as well as community organization leaders who successfully collaborate to create a working relationship that balances the need for community along those who visit Cooperstown. If Hopkinton is to take full advantage of the proposed International Marathon Center, a similar synergy and collaboration needs to be created in order to maximize the return to our community. An emphasis on Hopkinton's geographic location and interest in the healthy lifestyle and our natural resources will contribute to the success of the International Marathon Center and it will be an important element in our community's economic future. Ensuring that the vibrant downtown similar to Cooper, Cooperstown and creating a destination point. It's expected to be a, a, a two-day meeting and uh, you know, look, look forward to meeting Jeff Katz, the mayor of Cooperstown, uh, Ken Mifford, the um, Baseball Hall of Fame VP, Matt Hazard, the Cooperstown Chamber of Commerce Executive Director, Deb Taylor, Destination Marketing Corporation for Ostego County, uh, Joe Saracusa, the Fenimore Art Museum and Farmers Museum and VP of Operations, and Chris Powell, the Glimmerglass Festival Director. You know, this, um, this visit, you know, it, it really will give us uh, a, a, a glimpse into how a small community can um, have such uh, vibrant venues and still retain the uh, the feel. So um, that's uh, that was the bottom line of it. Uh, any uh, any questions? No, it's pretty well put together. So. Sorry, yes couple of logistics questions because I can hear a few folks wondering how are we how are you going to, who's going we're, we're still compiling the the list of, of um, you know who's uh, who's necessary um, you know and uh, where do we where do we have the biggest impact where do we have the biggest bang um, you know we were, we were talking about this this last year um, you know it's uh, some representatives for 26.2. Um, I was going to go. We were trying to see if we get the town manager to come to to come to that also. 
um, and maybe the, uh, the head of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, uh, we're still trying to figure out who the best stakeholders should be. I think that list you just described there, along with Mr. Kildoff, obviously, uh, right. makes right. all the sense in the world. Uh, and the next question the taxpayers are going to ask is, and who's paying for this? Um, well, we have to be careful uh, uh, taking money from the 26.2 Foundation because of, I believe, because of uh, uh, what we ethics. Ethics, ethics. ethics violations. So um, it sounds like a very, in my mind, it sounds like a great idea and a great trip because I think you'll learn an awful lot there. Whoever goes will learn an awful lot there. But this is one of those situations where we could take a little anthill and turn it into this big mountain of mess if we're not careful. So I would encourage us to do it. I'd encourage the town to go. I like the, the names of the individuals or the roles of the individuals you're talking about pulling together to go. But we got to be careful how it's done. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, the town manager, I think, can go and Elaine can go and they can put it on an expense report and things like that. The chair cannot. The chair can't, I don't think, I don't think uh, any money can be expended on the chair's travel. Um, I mean, it's not a big deal to get there. You're driving, so it's not going to take a jet to Cooperstown. So I, just be careful about how you do it because it can open up a little bit of a can of worms. Um, many years ago, uh, I'll tell you, I, t I did it then too, um, I went skiing. Uh, I drove an individual skiing to Vermont. And uh, I made it very clear that I was paying for my gas. It was like being back in high school arguing about the gas. And I paid for my ticket and I paid for my meals. I didn't pay for any of his stuff because uh, I didn't want to do that either, right? So we kept it completely separate. And I also did a um, conflict of interest um, declaration form. Uh, and that, that was the only time I ever traveled as, as a member of the Board of Selectmen was to go skiing with somebody uh, just to get to know them a little bit. Uh, literally, um, couldn't ski very well either, so it's kind of a problem. But anyway, uh, well, so this, I just think, yeah. But this is, yeah, this is, this is, this isn't a ski trip. But this is, uh, you know, this is a trip where, where we're meeting with uh, the community leaders, you know, because they, well, the way I see it is, you know, people are constantly saying that, uh, you know, that Hopkins changing and all that. We brought it up earlier, and we had the 300th, and we proved that uh, people are still moving here for the same reasons that I did 20 years ago. Um, but how do we how do we you know have a venue such as this? You know when 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 people think of Cooperstown, New York, and, and the the Baseball Hall of Fame, and to find out there's only two thousand people that live in that town. You know I know that that that's a number that must amaze a lot of people to think that such a such a huge venue, even you know Canton, Ohio, when you think of the, uh, the Football Hall of Fame, and those they're all they're all small. I'm not arguing against doing the trip at all. I think it's a great idea. But it will be labeled as a boondoggle by certain people in Hopkinton. I guarantee it. And we need to be very careful that how we put this thing together, that when that label comes forward and that accusation comes forward, that we can say, nope, this is exactly how it happened with receipts, et cetera, et cetera. So that's my only comment on this whole thing is I think it's a great idea, but please don't get us into a situation where we're accused of flying around on private jets because some people will say you took a Private jet yeah. to Cooper's down, even if you crawl out there. Yeah. That's what you'll hear. We can take my jet. It's got to be a helicopter. So, yeah. Yeah. so just it's keep us out of that mess. That's if, all. If a board member wants to go, be it the chair, vice chair, or board member, and they pay for 100% everything on their own, Do there's absolutely no ethics violation there whatsoever, with the exception of if there are there cannot be three of us that, that went, correct? Because then it's got to be a, an open meeting, posted that's as an open meeting. That's correct. Two, two or so, less can okay. go. That's good. That's it. I still don't. But two or less can go. I think the the way it would have to go down, frankly, is two or less can go. The board can authorize to cover the expenses of those individuals if we want to do that. But we have to have a formal vote to do that, because then you know it's 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 a sanctioned event by the town of Hopkinton through our its representatives. Um, and I think you still probably have to fill out some disclosure forms just to cover uh, uh, in the event that someone makes an accusation that's not correct. I'm just trying to figure out, is this being presented as an action item and a request for the board to determine who's going to represent us, or is this just a, a statement? I'm not, I'm not clear. Well, this was, this was to a, a proposed, a, a, the description of a proposed set of meetings in Cooperstown that um, 
I wanted to bring to the board's attention. Um, how it's paid for and, and all of that. If you know, I, I, you know, I'll pay for my, my my own for going up there. As as you know, but uh, but if there's a you know, it's it, it can't be much money, so I can handle it. But it's uh, no. I guess I'm just yeah. I'm just saying that. I mean, if this is if you're going as a representative of the board of the board, then mm -hmm. the board or if anybody is, then the board needs to uh, vote for that and say. You know, we would like so and so to represent us. Otherwise, you're going as an individual. Mm -hmm. So this is akin to um, a situation several years ago when the casino came up, yes, and uh, the board voted to send Mr. Kamalo and myself, and I think somebody Jamie. else, Jamie, the police chief, uh, a delegation went to uh, Norwich, Connecticut and met with the various people you just described there. Um, there, was, there was the expense of the employees traveling. I mean, I just drove down and went drove back. Was, we didn't stay or anything like that. Um, but the, yet, to your point, the board said, go. Mm -hmm. And this is who's going to go. Mm -hmm. So I think, I, think it, I think it's a great idea. I love the idea of the International Marathon Center in Hopkinton. And I love the idea of, you, of, of us, whoever that is, getting out to Cooperstown to understand how they make it work, because they make it work great, from what I can tell. Uh, but again, I just want to be really careful because it's these little things. I remember somebody jumped on a boat, went for a ride in the Boston Harbor, and all heck broke loose in that person's uh, career uh, for years on end because of it. Uh, so, you know, we got to be careful, that's all. So I think you know if we want if this meeting is pending, like if there's dates set and things like that, then we should try to figure out through an action item tonight who's going to go. So, uh, Mr. Catino, you're up for going to this. I am. Okay, so I'd like to make a motion that we send Mr. Catino as our representative to this trip, to be funded completely by Mr. Catino, of his own on his own volition, and represent us at this on this trip. Second. Are you amenable to that? I am. I'll second the motion. I want to have some discussion. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, does anybody else want to go? That's what I was going to ask. I do not. Want to go. Uh, for me, it would depend on the timing. I don't know if we have dates for the meeting. Um, if the timing worked out, I'd be amenable to going in addition to Mr. Catino, but I wouldn't want to replace him. Mm -hmm. That was the tone. That was the, my question. It's not to. I'm good with him. I second that for him going. Yeah. But I just want to know if anyone else wants to go. I'm happy to if other yeah. people go too. And and I would also defer to uh, Ms. Wright uh, if if she were to say that the date worked for her and she as the vice to go, chair. So, yeah. 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 Uh, and what about Mr. Kamalu and Ms. Lazarus? And or Lane probably doesn't want to go. And or Ms. <laughs> Lazarus. <laughs> Lane's going. <laughs> Depends on the time. So one of you is going to go. I think it would make sense for yeah. one of our professional managers to attend. Or both. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's you know, it's yep. it's uh, this is this is. Yep. One or both. So is that yeah. is that going to happen? One of you is going to go. Yes. Okay. More than two. Mm -hmm. All right. I like the so idea, of Mrs. Wright or Mr. Yep. Starrier. Yes, if it's so just Mr. Catino, it's fine too. But yep. So two members of the board of selectmen. Up to two. Yeah, up to two. Yep. Okay. Okay. You, you, are you comfortable with this? Uh, did you? Who made the motion? I did. You made the motion. Did you I'm second it? Super comfortable. Okay. With the motion. Comfortable. Okay. Yep. All, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Passed. Excellent. Okay. Manager's report. Two minutes ahead. Mr. Chair, with your permission, can we postpone this discussion to the next meeting? Sure. Okay. Any future board agenda items? Oh, wait a minute. Board invites. First, we're going to get that one in. Board invites. I don't want to miss that because if I miss another bean supper. I saw that we had uh, we were invited to the uh, award ceremony um, a week ago. 
Is anyone going to go to that? <laughs> <laughs> it was in this week's packet. Yeah. yeah. Um, graduation was fun. Did you have someone to graduate? No, I went. My next door neighbor graduated. Across the street neighbor. Nice kid. Okay. Uh, Dave I have no new information. Okay. All right. Now we'll go to f future board agenda items. So start. Uh, yeah, I'd like to request again that we discuss having some type of an online uh, reporting tool on spending in the town. Uh, I would prefer that it not be on our next meeting's agenda because I'm not going to be able to make it. But if we could get it on there two meetings from now, I would appreciate it. Thank you. I like that one. That's done. Um, not really, just a comment. I'd like, I appreciate how well the board came together today and stuck up for the town of Hopkins when it came to this Eversource thing. It was, uh, it's good to see that, and it's good for the townspeople to see that everything that we do up here as a board is for the betterment of the town of Hopkinton. And it, there's no one on this board that I've seen that makes decisions up here for their for their own personal gains or for their own agenda and it's nice to see when things like this come up it's nice to see everybody step up and and voice their their disdain for something like this for the town of Hopkinton and uh, so I'm, I'm thankful as a as a townsperson I'm, I'm thankful but as a, a member of the board uh, I think the three of you guys did a great job as well for for voicing your concerns and, and putting it crystal clear to these people that um, you know Hopkinton isn't a, 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 you're not going to walk on Hopkinton consistently without um, without getting a little pushback. So hey, I like the yeah, fact yeah. That, that 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 we all at the same time deci decided to look around and say, wait a minute, can we go down <laughs> with, yeah. the, with the with yeah. the rates today? That was that was the fun part. But I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Hurry, any, any uh, agenda future agenda? Uh, I had one uh, a couple nights ago as I was falling asleep, and I did not have a piece of paper next to my pillow, and I've been racking my brain for two days trying to remember what it was I wanted to talk about. It must have been a good one, though. It'll come back to me in another senior moment at that future date. it would be like Seinfeld, leave your little yeah. sketch pad next to Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jot down your jokes when you wake up. I cannot remember. But anyway, I'm and good. And if Thank I think you. of anything, I'll, I'll add it on. I thought that was the only one playing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mr. Kamal, anything to add? Mr. Lazarus, anything? Nope. No. Nope. Beautiful. With that, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Excellent. Others, oh, favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Good night, everyone. Thank you so much.